Hey everyone, here we are. Now we have yet another evening to talk about those enclaves of Queensland down south that have the best red wine in the world. If the South Australians actually wanted to grow red wine, they would never have sold us the Barossa Valley for $3.50. Now, just, just wanted to bring that up because we've got some people from South Australia on the call and they just happen to be red wine drinkers and they haven't yet come to terms with the fact that we have a red wine tax. So when they buy a bottle of red wine in South Australia, they've got to send a bottle to Queensland and I give them the address to send it to. Because if they don't do that, then they're just stealing from Queensland's enclave. And you know, you know what those South Australians are like, we've got to be onto them all the time. And look at that, I've even managed to get the right date on the webinar tonight Mr. Langford records he's lost the address. I'll resend it tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Mr. Langford, welcome, welcome, welcome. Great to see everybody on here. See, Jackie's just joined us. Vivian's joining us as we speak. Lots of people on tonight. It's great to have you all here. Tonight, we're going to have a run through on some of our usual information. And we're going to talk about our wallet and what the implications of the gold wallet will be and how it will put gold into your wallet, your personal gold wallet. So we've got a few things on the take tonight. We want to keep going. So Jenny and Doug, I see they're joining again for about the fourth or fifth time. You know, Jenny, you've got to stop drinking that red wine up there because it's pretty bad stuff where you are. I can see you having trouble getting on. Okay, let's get into this. If we run into, if we run into internet problems, we will have to go to a hotspot. And it's looking like we might have to do that anyway. But we'll see how we go. We've had one issue. No, it's not working too well. Okay. Let's see how we go. Nope, it's completely gone now. Hotspot, turn off Wi-Fi. La, 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 while we're thinking and following along, we will see if we can't get this to work. Come on. You can connect, connecting anytime now. Here we go. Right, let's try that. We're now connected to a hotspot on a phone. The internet has been spectacular today and then just not working at all. So we don't know what the problem is. We've been trying to talk to Telstra, try and sort it out. Let's go with the hotspot. Okay, here we go. Everyone goes forward together. Don't forget that. Please, people, don't forget that. Whatever we're doing in this marketplace, we are backing up the people that we know and care about as members with everything that we're doing in the gold business. So we have a fallback position all the way along. So welcome if you're here for the first time. If you're back again, we love having you here. Thanks for joining us. Here's our little intro video. Just make sure you pay attention because this is without doubt the best intro video we've had in a very long time. And we're going to do a whole lot more of them for different reasons and different applications.
There we go, guys. Great little intro video. I love it. I've sent it to a number of people and they really enjoyed it. It's simple, easy, short, quick to understand. Obviously, there's a whole lot more information behind that. But it's just a great intro about what we're doing. We're building a package that gives us a measure of financial stability. We're not here to promise the, the, I don't know how to describe it. We're not here to promise you we have the answer to every question. What we're here to say is this is what we found. We aren't financial advisors. We don't tell you what you should do. We're telling you what we've discovered. If you want to follow along, that's great. If you want to negotiate with some of these individual companies, that's also acceptable. We have a number of sponsors that, that work in that vein. ComChoice, Skippy Pest Control, Easy Shopping Cards, BJS Urban, Love Day Vehicle Lubricants and Surefire Web. We had a member who told his boss he should call ComChoice a few weeks ago. And Glenn called me to thank me for the lead because it, it was a very big commercial phone system. And I'm just happy that our member got a benefit out of that from where he worked and he didn't get a direct cash benefit, but his boss looked very fondly on him because he solved a major problem for their company. And Glenn was able to do that. Skippy Pest Control, you know what Dan's like. He will squash termites with a small hammer all day. And he really loves it if he's got to climb under a house and drill holes. Brad Smith at Surefire Web solves our technical problems. Easy shopping cards, they've given out, I don't know, they must be up to $20,000 worth of member benefits at the moment. Uh, paid out, it will pay out into gold when the new website goes live. BJS Urban, you want a fence and you're in Adelaide, Brad's the man. Love Day Vehicle Lubricants, they have the oil, the good oil. Use it in all our vehicles. So why specifically are we here? We are here because we're a group of like-minded people. We may not all agree on the political views of the world. We may not all agree on what's going to happen tomorrow. But we agree that the world is in a world of hurt and there will be significant changes in the economic systems that we confront. So what we're doing is trying to protect ourselves in an environment where we have the ability to be self-sufficient. And we're focused on that. We need to make sure that we survive the economic turmoil that surrounds us. So welcome to AU4U and our digital platforms. We are here tonight because we have the ability to become our own bank. Now, I don't know how many of you have had up close and personal negotiations with banks in the recent history, but I was part of one today and I've been party to a number of them over the last six, seven months. And I can tell you that banks are not your friends. They will use you, they will abuse you, and they will make sure that their backside is protected and your money isn't. So it's not the fault of the people that work in the bank. It's the corporate direction they have as banks. And you need to make sure that you understand that. You need to set yourself up so that you can be your own bank. Make sure you get the contrast of what I'm talking about. You can go and open a bank account or you can be your own bank. Now, we're still in that very early stage of negotiating between having a commercial bank account or whether we can do it outside of the banking system. 
So just be careful. Make sure you understand what you're asking the banks to do. We're here to talk about being your own bank with physical assets, gold, silver, and some digital crypto assets. Now, we will have a number of opportunities in the coming weeks to leverage up all of those things. But at the moment, we're trying to focus on making sure that we get the best bang for our buck where we are. And that will take us a little while, but I can assure you we have made some massive strides in, in the last month or so. And we will be coming out the other end with a shining, smiling face. And you won't need to be a networker to build this business because showing someone your phone will build a business. Make sure you understand that. Being a salesperson is not a requirement to be successful with us. Be your own bank. Hold your own currency. And if you listen to enough videos, you'll see that holding your own currency means gold and silver. Make sure you have a portfolio that includes those. Make sure that you understand how to use cryptocurrency. Had a situation this week where I was withdrawing some Bitcoin, converting it into cash and putting it into a bank account. And I use a specific bank account because only that bank account doesn't shut off my access if I deal with cryptocurrency. I can't put the proceeds into my personal bank account because as soon as they know that it's come from cryptocurrency, they shut my account. So I had to go through an entire interview process with the exchange to explain to them why that bank account is the one I use, et cetera, et cetera. Because if I put it into my personal bank account, it will be closed in a heartbeat. You cannot underestimate the power that these banks have over your life. Make sure that you're careful what you do with the banks. So let's look at our supplier history, 60 year history of being a vault. This metal supplier that we're using has a 40 year history. The insurance is full replacement value. It's SMSF compliance. So if you have a super fund that you want to convert, um, had a conversation with another one of our members recently where his super fund was losing about $150 a week and he's managed to convert all of that into gold and silver. The buyback price is based on the current spot price. Now I can't tell you that next week it's going to be higher than it is today. I can't tell you that it'll be higher than it was last week. I just know that the gold price over the last 20 years has continued to increase. Now, it may not be what we want it to be. It may not be what we think is in the best interest of what our pocket is, but gold, historically. Now, let's talk about how long that is. When I say historically, I'm talking about thousands of years. Not the last five years, thousands of years. Gold has been a currency before banks existed. Let me say that again. Gold has been a currency before banks existed. And gold continues today to hold that type of value. It goes up, not because the gold price goes up, but because the value of the fiat currency we hold is going down. So there we are, gold in the periodic table, and right above it sits silver. What a coincidence there, one above the other in the periodic table. The heavier you get, the further down the table you are. So once you know that silver and gold are there, they are valuable without question. And tonight we'll listen to a little video that talks about why silver is so important 
in our economy. Simple, straightforward, transparent. Customers can set up an account for free, save in gold and silver. Absolutely for free. Affiliates can earn gold just for being a member. Terms and conditions apply. Yes, you need to be an affiliate. Yes, you need to have a $300 voucher. Your voucher will be recashed, so eventually you'll get all of your $300 converted into gold. Thus, at that point, everything you've done is free. And once you're in that profile, your wallet will be valuable, and we're going to talk about that tonight. So the wallet that's coming lets you take all of your bonuses and earnings in gold, silver, Bitcoin, or cash. Now, we say Bitcoin there, but in effect, it's cryptocurrency. We say Bitcoin because that's what most people relate to and understand. In the cryptocurrency market, Bitcoin is the grandfather of them all. Before Bitcoin, there was no cryptocurrency. So make sure you understand that you control that. It's not something that the company decides. It's what you decide. And if you have gold and you want to convert it into silver, you can. If you have Bitcoin and you want to convert it, you can. Likewise with cash. So getting started is really easy. Really easy. Acquire, once you've got your voucher, acquire at least $100 worth of metal per month. That's one BV. And that is critical going forward because this is a key to what the wallet is going to provide you. You must have one BV of turnover to get the benefit from what the wallet's doing. Share the value of gold and silver with others and make sure that they understand how important it is. And thirdly, show them how to start. That's it. Simple as that. There isn't any other options. We have had enormous amount of success with the gold program in the last month. Just amazed me at how well it's gone. So what's happening in the gold world? Are you for you? Gold for you. What is happening in that world? Oh, that's right. Silver's had an enormous uptick in the market. Let's have a listen to Mike Maloney and Jay Martin because they talk about specifically that. I do think that this year there's going to be some tremendous market correction. Uh, I think that people are start going to start coming to the conclusion uh, that they have to sort of run for safety uh, in this. Interesting. Um, now, a lot of people think that the uh, markets are so manipulated now by uh, the central banks and the governments that they can't crash anymore, that they're just going to go up. Well, why did they, why did they do such a, an enormous pullback in March? I believe that um, the world's central banks can manipulate the markets, but they can't uh, overwhelm the free market, overcome the free market uh, in the short term. What they can do is create a tremendous amount of currency after a market crash, get the markets to go up. And when they do that, they steal wealth from the poor and the middle class, people that are holding on to currency, and they uh, boost financial assets such as the stock market, making Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos uh, send to billionaires. You know, so yeah. they're, they're stealing from the pop rest of the population and they're bestowing that stolen wealth upon the wealthiest people on the planet. So, okay, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff in there I wanna unpack. And I just wanna begin by saying a, lo a lot of what you're talking about, you've covered in a, a series of videos called A History of Money. I think there's- The hidden secrets of money. The hidden secrets of money, that's right, that's right. And these were put out like, what, seven years ago, Mike? It was over a 10 year process. The last one was just about two, two years ago, I think. Okay. Um, okay. And we're coming out with a couple of new episodes that are actually part of a different series, the formula for prosperity. 
Okay. Hidden secrets of money. And I found these, yeah. I guess, five, six years ago. They're excellent. And I, you know, there was like a six part series when I found them, everybody should check this out and provides a lot of expansion on what you're talking about, about currency versus money. So they were originally made uh, for, we were going to do a, a series for PBS or the history channel. So this is shot in 18 countries, two full-time animators. Uh, Dan Rubach is my producer, director, and he edits the thing and scores it. Uh, and uh, these are done to a very, very high standard. They are. Uh, when you're shooting in 18 countries, I mean, it, you know, these things are not cheap. We've spent more than a million dollars on this 10-part series. And uh, uh, it's not your average YouTube stuff. And then we give it away for free. It's, it's just good knowledge. And if you want to see the production quality, start with the last one, episode 10, and then go back and watch some of the others. But episodes 9 and 10, to me, uh, I think that it's worth somebody making a bowl of popcorn and putting it on their big screen TV. Got it. All right. All right. Okay. Now you, you mentioned a couple of things there, forecasting and market correction. You know, a lot of the people that I talked to are completely aligned with this. You know, if this occurs 2021, 20, it's hard to time these things. I don't ask for right. specifics, but you know, in that scenario, Mike, would you expect a similar response this time to the crash we had in March where there's a flight to us dollars before cash gets redistributed to probably hard assets instead of financial assets? Uh, there will be both because each time it's going to be less and less a flight to U.S. dollars because when you talk about the U.S. dollar, you're usually talking about U.S. treasuries. Sure. And bonds are becoming, I mean, if you have a population that has that isn't as rich as it was the previous year and our GDP contracted because of these lockdowns, uh, so if you have a, a smaller tax base, uh, the bonds become more and more suspect over the years because the bonds rely on future taxation. This is part of, you know, we live in a modern monetary system that is a, um, it, it's, it's a feudal type of system. There we are serfs because we have to work to replace stolen purchasing power uh, that they do through taxation to pay the principal and the interest I mean, we're paying off in the U.S. We've got a 30-year bonds. So we're paying off uh, um, the prosperity that we enjoyed under uh, the first George Bush, you know, back in the 90s. We just finished paying off the Ronald Reagan era. Mm. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, yeah, there is a market crash coming, but each time there is a flight to safety, you're going to see uh, a higher percentage go toward gold, silver, and cryptos, and a smaller percentage going toward uh, bonds, because bonds uh, in a shrinking GDP, and you know, the big brokerage firms can figure this out. It takes them a little longer. I mean, I'm surprised that it took them uh, this long to start identifying cryptocurrencies and stuff. As you know, we're starting to see um, uh, big firms that uh, are normally investing in only traditional financial assets, starting to go into cryptocurrency. We're starting to see uh, big pension funds uh, announce that they're going to be purchasing gold. Uh, and uh, this is just something that is a transition. And these guys are late, <laughs> but they're still, they can still make the party. Uh, yeah. They're just not early for the party. Uh, you and I were early for this party, <laughs> which is great. I mean, gold has been, gold and silver have been the uh, number one perform, you know, behind cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and such. Yeah. Um, uh, they've been the number one performing asset of this century. Uh, and people still think it's a lunatic fringe thing. <laughs> right. Now you could surprise that, well, you could surmise that, a lunatic fringe could be tinfoil hat wearing aficionados because that's where we've been. And it's great to see that Mike Maloney thinks that we're all like that because without gold and silver, without cryptocurrency, I think the average person in the world is going to be in a world of hurt in the coming months. It, it might be a while away, but it's going to happen. There are so many people warning us about what's coming. 
Uh, if you listen to Gregory Manorino, a guy that I use regularly to uh, quote information from, he's actually just saying the first warning signs of a total collapse have occurred. Now, guess what? We're part of that lunatic fringe. We've already started to go down this road. We've already begun to transition into an asset class that the banks don't like. And that's because they don't have control of it. So it works like this. If you're hunting for your financial future, you actually need a tripod to keep your hunting accurate. Physical gold, physical silver, and cryptocurrency. Notice I said physical gold and physical silver, not ETFs, not futures. Don't care about any of that. I remember about a year ago, we had a wombat on the call who assured me that I didn't know what I was talking about that the price of gold was set by the Sydney Stock Exchange. Well, that's great if you want to buy futures or ETFs, but you go down the road here to a bullion dealer and say, the Sydney Stock Exchange says I should pay this much for gold and see how long it takes for them to throw you out the front door. The Stock Exchange does not set the price of physical gold or physical silver. The premiums on actual physical assets at the moment are fluctuating dramatically. Uh, a week ago, the bullion dealers in America were struggling to supply silver. In fact, most of them shut down their websites over a weekend because they couldn't supply. That should tell you something. They can buy all the silver ETFs they want. And a silver ETF is nothing more than a promissory note printed on a piece of paper. That's great. If you believe they can supply the silver, most of them can't. That's why the silver market has been going through enormous ups and downs in the last few weeks. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But here's the thing about cryptocurrency. We've had a number of trading platforms we've tested, used, etc. We're bringing all of that together under our own banner. We will have our own platform. So you will no longer need to go and register on website, do your KYCs, blah, 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 so on and so forth. It will be in one place, AU for you. Everything will happen from there. And that's why it's so important to understand why bullion is so different. Bullion is not an investment, it's an asset. It does not earn interest. But what if you were one of our members? What if you were an au for you member? Well, the new process that's in test now, your wallet will earn revenue month to month. You won't have to do anything to enable that. It will happen automatically. Why would that be important? Well, that's because it's gold. And it's under construction right now. We're hoping that tonight we'll be in test mode with our wallet one section of it that does this. We have a huge amount of software in the pipeline at the moment. I'm hoping that after the last 15 nasty emails I sent to our software developers that we'll have a website next week. Let's see what we can do. So anyway, what are the requirements to get your wallet to pay you while you're asleep? Number one, you need to be an affiliate. Number two, you need to save metal monthly, $100 a month if you can afford it. Get one BV per month. That's it. Simple as that. 
the wallet will work for you. You won't have to do anything about it. I'm, a, I'm gonna show you shortly how that will come together, but understand that's it. That's the limit of it. Notice nowhere on that slide, is there anything about registering 50 or 60 people? Nowhere. If you're an affiliate and you are saving metal monthly, you qualify for the loyalty program and the wallet payments. That's it. Other than that, it will build itself because your wallet front end will pay you member benefits. Member benefits. Goes into your wallet, goes into your wallet as bullion. You can convert it to whatever you like, but you get paid in bullion. Here's what the wallet looks like. Every transaction will have an ID. It will have a description. So that one's, okay, this person's just registered. They've managed to get 1.639344 grams of gold with their registration, $100 worth of gold. That's the amount, that's the transaction time and date. And it shows you what the balance is. Now, please understand these numbers are based on some figures that I threw in the website to do the tests. They're not real, but they give you an understanding of what we're talking about. So now once that's in the system and you're on the, on the road with your buying gold monthly, this is what happens. Now you get another line, another transaction, a member benefit that will pay you in gold. Notice what the cost is, zero. You will not pay for this. It's a member benefit. It will continue to do this while ever you have gold and you're an active member of au for you it gives you the transaction date. It will have a transaction and time stamp as above, but I typed that into a spreadsheet so that I could demonstrate it. And it will then show you what your new balance is. This is just an example, but it goes to show you exactly how the wallet will work. You will get paid in bullion. And you can do whatever you like with it. You can send an email and say, I want you to turn it into one kilo bars and send it to me. Cost you $25 freight, a few bucks to get it converted into bars. Other than that, it's, it's yours. There's no fee to extract it. There's no hidden costs. It's your member benefit. It's yours. Do what you will with it. Just make sure that you understand what the benefits will get you. Now, once you start to see this in your wallet, I'm figuring that we're gonna be dealing with some very rapid growth because that, ladies and gentlemen, is free gold. Free, no cost, free gold. What else do you need to know? What will it do for you? It pays you member benefits, into your gold wallet, bullion, gold. So what now? Right, pay attention. Every week we talk about the issues we're having with banks, cryptocurrencies, all sorts of things. Make sure you understand the difficulty you're going to experience if you need to make a transaction. Now, if you're dealing with a bank and you tell them you're gonna buy gold, more than likely they will stop you. I've had my account closed. I've had my Visa debit card turned off. I've had all sorts of things happen. Uh, last week, I was trying to move money from an exchange. So I sold some Bitcoin. Turned it into money, want to put it in the bank. 
Okay, I've got a problem with that because if I put it in my personal account, that bank has already told me if I do another transaction that is in some way linked to cryptocurrency, I'll close my account. So I had to go through an interview process as to why I wasn't sending it into my personal account. I had to send it into my company account. Please be careful. Understand what we're talking about. What we're doing here tonight is by default getting you outside of the banking system. So in the USA, they're stopping retail investors from buying shares. They're stopping retail investors from buying metal. Be aware, think carefully, make sure you understand what you're gonna say. Um, I have a personal friend who's had all of his bank accounts closed because he was helping people buy gold. No joke, not making that up, all of his bank accounts closed. In fact, I had to take him to a, a, a enough different bank today to open a new bank account because all of his bank accounts are shut. Be careful what you tell banks. Be careful what you tell crypto exchanges. They are looking for an excuse to stop you doing what you're doing. Uh, yes, Brad, we will have the ability for you to put it into an au for you wallet and we will make sure that it happens all over the place. There you go. Uh, just seen cases where a question transfers to CoinSpot. Exactly. Cryptocurrency. There is a problem. So have a listen to this. This is a really, really good interview. This case here is actually one based on inflation. Okay, I understand that there are people who are advancing deflationary arguments. They're saying the very same facts that I'm referring to, you know, the pandemic, that's deflationary. You know, people are getting uh, fired in large numbers still, you know, jobs going away. This is all deflationary. But in my view, the printing pest is the more powerful force. And that, you know, clearly went into overdrive in 2020. Uh, there was no deflation in 2020. Okay, inflation didn't go through the roof, at least not as tracked by CPI. Uh, but there was no deflation. So I'm, I'm really not persuaded by these deflationary arguments. And I think the evidence, the writing, or rather the printing press is visible on the wall. The money printing is happening. It's not ending anytime soon. So this is great for all commodities, anything real. Um, that having been said, I'm partial to the ones where there are real supply issues because some of them supply can be ramped up. Like for example, oil, right? Clearly, uh, printing more money sends everything real up. But one, it's more sensitive to the immediate deflationary argument if people aren't traveling. And two, the constraints right now are voluntary. You've got OPEC plus voluntarily cutting back supply. And they can undo that at any mo moment in time. So, so oil is not my favorite. I do see a near term, especially if you know the lockdowns end and there's this coiled spring effect of people you know, bursting out from cabin fever, lots of traveling, lots of going out. Uh, I could see oil, you know, spiking. But then the long-term economics comes back into play. So you, I'm, I'm long-winded answer. Commodities that I really like. Um, I do like um, particularly the electrification minerals. I like uh, copper and nickel especially. Not particularly bullish on lithium. Um, Oil, I just said, could spike, but you know that needs to work out and, and become an actual structural supply issue instead of a voluntary one. Uh, I think gold and silver, you can make the argument for them as commodities. We don't want to leave them out, right? If prices of commodities are going up, uh, that's bullish for gold and silver. But of course, the monetary phenomenon matters, too, matters as well, making them, I think, a bit of a win-win, however this plays out in 2021. Uh, you brought up uranium, which is another, uh, you know, has it's not always been a favorite of mine. I was, I was out of uranium for some years. The underlying base for all this, though, would you not say we need a weaker dollar to have that commodity boom? 
Yes and no. Um, well, one is I do think we are going to get that. The dollar has rebounded a little bit lately. You know, the race to the bottom or the race to debase, as it were, you know, somebody wins for a while, somebody else wins for a while, it ratchets lower. Um, but the dollar, I think it's very significant that the dollar hit a three-year low and remains near multi-year lows, even as you and I speak. The, the recent uptick is just a tick. It's not, I think, a, a permanent change in direction for the dollar. So I do think we're going to see that. And I think there's data. It's not just me you know, theorizing. You look at the uh, money supply, and the US has dramatically caught up with new money supply to uh, the UK, the EU, other major competitors for potential reserve currency status. So there's, there's reason to be uh, bearish on the dollar, I think. And, and back to our initial point of 2021 being a record year like no other, you know, the, the two trillion uh, proposal right now, I think that's just an opening salvo. If we have four years of blue wave, you know, the, from infrastructure to Green New Deal to the many, many other uh, items on the wish list, you know, the left green wish list of spending, I think we're going to see you know, a massive debasement of the dollar going forward. And that's even without more COVID variants causing more shutdowns, causing more, you know, panic spending on the part of the government. Do you see a massive economic downturn, Lobo? I think, I think that, well, eventually, yes, you know, sooner or later, but, you know, later can be a while. So that doesn't help as much as, as investors right now this year. I think my, my outlook for 2021 would be that if the new variants, yeah. you know, this, this Kent variant, uh, they seem to have got it under control in the UK, but that's on the back of a, of a near total lockdown. Whereas places like Portugal that didn't do that, it's just going through the roof. So it, as we speak today, we can't say how that's going to play out. And again, whatever the medical facts may be, the government response is highly predictable. Mm -hmm. And as people get alarmed, as hospitals fill up, you know, what the government will do, I think there's no doubt about that. So that could... That, yes, that could make for a major economic downturn. Absent that, I think the money printing actually does succeed in reflating the next round of happy, happy, joy, joy. You know, that long tail of the square root, it's still flat to up. Like the latest job reports numbers out of the U.S. are, are not good, not going in the right direction. We still have almost a million people a week claiming first-time yeah. unemployment claims, right? So the fact that the commodities have rebounded really in advance of what we could call a healthy recovery um, is, is quite telling. And in my mind, it makes that inflationary argument. It makes that reflationary inflationary argument. Just to um, expand on, on silver, uh, you mentioned the Green New Deal. How vital will Green New Deal be uh, for silver? As you know, silver investors have probably been the most patient and hurt um, this <laughs> ride. Um, is this finally going to be the year for silver maybe it won't happen in one year but you know green new deals in effect up until 2050 but is this let's say the decade finally for silver and could we see those triple digit silver prices people have longingly waited for you're being very kind to me by saying could we if you said will we you'd be putting me on the spot well there we I go mean, will, we, we? Absolutely. Love, will we um and sort of my my without getting too wild waving and you know hyperinflation you know the world goes to hell in a handbasket just looking at the trends I do think there's a double left in gold. I think there's a triple or quadruple left in silver, which does take it to triple digits. And to, to specifically drill in on what you're saying, there's a, there's a case here, and I, I'm not predicting this will happen, but there's a case here where if you have the economy continuing to struggle, the, the K or the square root, right, at, on one hand, and that does actually limit um, industrial output, but at the same time, you've got all this government money going to the Green New Deal. And as you wisely point out, silver is an energy metal. Silver is essential for the photovoltaics, which are part of this. It's not just batteries. I think it's a mistake to equate battery metals with energy metals. There are other metals that are part of this, and silver is a critical one. You, you, you can't have this mainstay of, of solar power without silver. Okay, concentrated solar is a little bit different, but these panels that are everywhere, those all require silver. There you go. Two times increase in silver price and a three to four times price in gold. That is 
eye-watering. But these are people that talk about the industry based on what they see and what they experience. We're not bringing you information from people that are just speculating. Stansbury Research have been in the metals information system for a very long time. So just be aware, that's what they see happening. The new website for au 4 u almost complete. We are stress testing it. We were stress testing it last week. We got stressed and we found a couple of things we need to tweak. So we're working on that now. Hopefully in the next 48 hours, we'll have all that done and we'll be able to go with a live website. So make sure you understand the benefit everyone goes forward together. Everyone that's in this business with us will go forward with us, whatever we want to do. Make sure you understand it. Make sure that you understand the V999 Gold website, get registered, get some free crypto, get yourself set up. And yes, Brad, it was the other way around. I was dribbling on there, getting a bit excited about that video. If you log in, Make sure you understand that you've got to do your KYCs. You've got to understand they're not going to give you anything until you have your KYCs done. There's a lot of people that are having problems with this. It's yet another ongoing issue. So if you have issues, there is the email address, gns at carrotbars.com. And you'll probably then get an access, uh, a response from Freebay. What a surprise. Carrot bars, Freebay, V999. It's in the process of moving, transitioning. It's a moving target. So I understand there are issues. What we're trying to do is get the best value out. And if we can do that, we're well on the way. Oh, I missed that one. If you're trying to put assets like Bitcoin into V999 to buy crypto, can't do it. It's not working yet. We have a number of people that are trying. They put Bitcoin in. They're trying to buy V999 to turn them over to get the 0.02%. Uh, it's hard. So... If you get yourself organized, Brad's just said you need to be registered by the 31st of March. So we'll need to make sure everybody on the call, everyone you know, everyone in your team is registered and verified on the 31st of March. Lyndall, we have no idea how long it takes for them to respond, but I'd be sending them a, an email. If you register before the 31st of January, you get the free tokens. But if you register after you don't, yes, that's right. It was 50 free tokens. And you had to be registered and completed by the 1st of February. Any news on updates on the delivery of gold? No, Mr. Crampton, we have not. We've asked the question yet again. And I suspect we'll get yet another email to say, guarantee it'll be shipped this month. That's getting an old story. Gold, Jan saying gold is in the process of being delivered. So we'll see how that comes out. We'll talk next week about the gold delivery. The difficulty with that is you can't get an answer. So let's just move on. What's happening in the world? Lots. Everything's getting worse, but don't worry, we've got gold and silver, baby. Real, physical gold and silver. Remember, everybody goes forward together. So thank you for joining us tonight. If there's any questions, shoot them in the chat window. Uh, we will be working hard on getting the rest of this resolved as we go forward. We have a whole lot of questions out there, some amazing software coming and the benefits to our members will be amazing.
We really have worked hard on it. And <laughs> quite interestingly, I'm not seeing anyone get paid in Bugattis or Ferraris. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe Dan McCloskey should buy me a Bugatti, but he, I don't know that he's actually up to that. Now, we are talking about moving our Sunday meetings. So if you're looking at coming on the third Sunday, we will confirm this week in writing that we will go forward with a meeting at Springwood instead of Sumner Park. So we can have the Gold Coast people come up, the Northern and Western people come to Springwood because it's right on the freeway, easy to get to. It saves us doing two meetings. We'll go back to one. So we'll send that out by email as we go forward. And yeah, Brad Cervalli said, I need a Bugatti so I can go to Monaco. And two problems with that, getting in and out of a Bugatti. I would need a crane. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining us. We've had a great time tonight. Appreciate you attending. Sounds like we're having a good time and we will see you on the golden beaches of the world.